When you click the SPSS logo, you get this. This tells you that it's loading up. Give it some time. This is the first page that pops up. What I really like about it is it has all the recent files here. So in case you've been working on a SPS file back and forth every other day or something, it will show up in your popular list. You can do a new data set, which is what we're going to do here in a second. And I'm going to show you some of these learning modules that they have over here. IBM, you got to remember, IBM, they basically invented technology. They are at the top leading cutting edge of technology. So I am tending to use these tutorials more and more, and I suggest you do the same. Open a new data set. Just click the new data set. Hit the OK button down here. You get two data, I'm sorry, you get two SPSS files. The first one has numbers on it. Looks like this. It looks like an Excel spreadsheet. This is the data file, and it ends with a .sav. This has two parts, a data view and a variable view. I am going to make little videos separate about those. But the other file is what we call an output file, and it looks like this. And on this, you get your charts, your graphs, your matrices, all the output from the SPSS data file. So remember, SPSS has two separate files. Every time you open up one of these files, you're going to get one of these files. Big hint here is if you do multiple data files, different problems, different projects, what happens is if you don't change the output page... They all show up on the same output page, and you don't want to do that. So my suggestion is, every time you finish a separate project, save the output file as the same name as the data file, and then go ahead and close it out. When you open up another one of these, it will automatically make a new output file. I'm going to show you how to transfer data from an Excel spreadsheet to SPSS. They're very compatible, and I strongly suggest that when you are collecting your data that you put it in an Excel spreadsheet. All right, let's jump over to Excel. i got a pre-made set of data here. The easiest way is to highlight all the information, numbers, basically, all the information from each one of these columns. Each column is going to be a variable. Okay, you start with just the data, not the titles. Okay, no titles. And you're going to copy... I'm going to jump back. you got to make sure you're in data view down here, right? You don't want to put the data where the names and all the other characteristics of the variable are. You want to put it in the data view. Make sure you're in box 1A. SPSS, if you scroll down, will not automatically scroll up. And I have made that mistake a million times. But there's our data, okay? Now, if you look at the variable view, we have to put the names in. So let's go ahead and name our variables. Jump back to the sheet. I'll show you a good trick here. They are in a row. I'm going to show you how to put them in a column. Highlight, cup, co I'm sorry, copy. Pick a cell, any cell, right click. You're going to transpose. See that? It puts them in a column. From row to column is transpose. But these are not all ready for SPSS titles. Important, SPSS titles. Cannot have spaces, cannot have commas, cannot have periods, cannot have any of those special weird little marks that you find on your keyboard. But it can take an underscore. So that's all I do is change them to underscores. And if they're not right, this, the SPSS will not accept them when you try to transfer them over. So always double check. I always miss one or two. Well, that sure did. Fraction test. Remember, no spaces. And you cannot start off your variable names with a number. That's that's another weird one. But we have them here. We're just going to right-click, copy. Make sure you're in variable view now. Right-click, paste. So that's it for the basics. MGZ, out.